Sake, whiskey, and beer are three popular alcoholic beverages in Japan that are also exported to many countries. When it comes to popularity and exports, beer takes the lion's share in both the global and Japanese market, while sake and whiskey do not trail too far back. Visiting small craft breweries or distilleries are great ways to learn more about Japanese drinks and connect with the locals. And that is what I'll be doing in central Japan, starting from Nagoya's Chubu Centre International Airport. From the bustling city of Nagoya, to the countryside town of Gujo Hachiman, to the traditional pilgrim route of the Ise Shrines, we'll be exploring the world of two popular alcoholic beverages, beer and sake and enjoy some sightseeing as well along the way. So join me, Reina Ong, as I go on an intoxicating journey through craft beer and sake in and around Nagoya. Nagoya. Nagoya is one of the most populous cities in Japan and only 30 minutes by train from Chubu Centre International Airport. The city is known for its local specialties like unagi, chicken wings, misokatsu, and Nagoya Kochin chicken. There is no lack of eateries in central Nagoya, and the two main shopping and dining areas are around Nagoya Station and Sakae, the city's lively downtown core. In this section, we'll introduce two craft beer breweries, one in central Nagoya and the other in the neighboring city of Handa. Handa Red Brick Building The late 19th century was when the Japanese beer industry started to develop and when the country's four major beverage companies we know today were established. Coming up against these four giants was the modestly sized Marusan Brewing Company. The company commissioned the Handa Red Brick Building in Handa, Aichi Prefecture, which was completed in 1898 and outfitted with the then cutting-edge beer brewing technology. Brewmasters from Germany were invited to impart their knowledge, and this was the humble beginnings of Kabuto beer. This is the Handa Red Brick Building, which was designed by the same architect who also did the Yokohama Red Brick Warehouses and the ornamental designs of the Nihonbashi Bridge in Tokyo. No expense was spared, and everything you see here was done using the latest technology and designs of the 19th century. Inside the historical building is a museum, a shop selling beer and various other souvenirs, and a restaurant to enjoy the brew which has been reproduced using its original recipes. The various informative displays in the museum tell the story of Kabutobia, outlining its history from its modest start to becoming the best-selling beer in central Japan, and even winning a gold award at the 1900 Paris Expo. However, the brand did not survive the trials of the 20th century and disappeared from the public eye by 1945. Over a hundred years since the first Kabuto beer was brewed there, modern brewmasters have succeeded in reproducing a centuries-old recipe through research, trial and error. You can sample the two types of Kabuto beer here, which are named after the periods they're made in. The darker one is the Meiji Kabuto beer, while the lighter one is the Taisho Kabuto beer. Goodbye! Oh, this is kind of light. Oh, oh. The beer is weirdly light for the color it is. You know, between the two, I think I like the Meiji beer better. Honda Red Brick Building is about an hour by train or bus from Chubu Centre International Airport or a quick 35-minute train ride from Nagoya Station, making it a nice half-day trip out of central Nagoya. Why Market Brewing? The number of Japanese craft beer breweries increased in 1994 when the minimum quantity of beer brewed to qualify for a brewing license was reduced. However, the popularity of craft beer only took off in the 2010s when breweries started to focus on improving quality and flavour and associating craft beer as the local specialty. Y Market Brewing, which opened in 2014, is Nagoya's first craft beer brewery. The Y Market Brewing tap room is located in what looks like a light industry district. That's it over there. I feel like I found this cool secret drinking spot, so let's go drink some beer. 
I got special permission to tour the Immaculate Brewery and learned that there is just so much happening behind the scenes to make a batch of beer. We're inside the tap room and they usually have about eight varieties of beer and taps. I think I'm gonna go for this, 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 that, 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 and that, that. Why not, right? <laughs> I ordered the Fruit Hazy IPA, which is a melon beer. On my first that the melons were actually cut and processed on the premises here, so I'm gonna give it a try. <sighs> it's so sweet. Um, it's almost like drinking a melon juice, but it's actually beer. And I can see myself drinking lots of this on a hot day. From here, I return to the station and head for Sakae, the heartbeat of Nagoya. The area around its iconic tower and landmark is nice for relaxing and going for an evening stroll to enjoy the night views. Just around the corner is Craft Beer Keg Nagoya, a craft beer specialty restaurant including ones from Y Market Brewery. The food menu also contains a nice selection of dishes which pair well with beer. This is a smoked IPA. Wow! It's like fruity at first, and then pow, the smokiness just hits you. It's good, I like this. I highly recommend spending your evening in the vibrant Sakai district, where you can enjoy delicious food and drink and soak in the city vibes. Ise. The Ise shrines or Ise Jingu in Japanese are the most sacred shrines in Japan and located a 90-minute train ride south of Nagoya in Mie Prefecture. Made up of the outer and inner shrines, Ise Jingu has been visited by pilgrims and worshippers for centuries. Oharai Machi, the traditional approach to the inner shrine, is lined with stores offering tired travellers nourishing food, a place to rest, treats and souvenirs to bring home. Today, it is a popular place to soak in the traditional atmosphere and sample the local foods and drinks. We'll spend a few hours visiting the charming Oharai Machi and Okage Yokocho, including visiting one craft beer restaurant operated by the brewery and one sake brewery. We're at the craft beer restaurant operated by Ise Karoya Bakushu. Let's go inside and check it out. Established in 1575, Ise Kadoya is a family business that provided visitors to Ise Jingu, a place to rest, tea and sweets for over centuries. Making miso and soy sauce was another branch of the business, and over the years, the company expanded on their brewing techniques and switched to craft beer in 1997. Their craft beer label, Ise Kado, has won numerous awards domestically and internationally since 2001. Inside the atmospheric restaurant, Visitors can enjoy the Isekado craft beer as well as the local specialties. The area around Ise is famous for its seafood like oysters, abalone, and Japanese spiny lobster or Ise Ebi. I've ordered some oyster dishes as well as a tasting flight. Kanpai! Ooh, mm. what, what is this one? I can't read it. I'll find out later. <laughs> mm. Mm. I could eat 10 of these right now. They're like really good. I probably could finish the whole plate myself. No! We ordered another one for you. <laughs> So fruity. Iseman Naikumae Brewery. Not far from the entrance to Okage Yokocho is Iseman Naikumae Brewery, the only sake brewery in the Iseshima region. A cedar ball or a sugidama lets you know where sake is sold. A new sugidama that is fresh and green indicates that new sake is available. Over time, the cedar dries out and becomes brown, indicating that the sake has matured. Regardless of colour, you can be sure that when you see one of these, sake is sold there. Japanese sake has been produced since ancient times, but it was used mostly for religious purposes. 
This is the sake that is offered to the Ise shrines. Sake, at its essence, is an alcoholic drink made from fermented rice and its key ingredients are water, rice, koji malt and yeast. The sake we know today dates back to the 18th century when the advancements of brewing techniques led to major improvements in flavour and its usage spread from religious purposes to drinking for leisure. Sake brewing at Iseman happens behind the shop space and due to the size of the small brewery, each batch of sake comes in limited quantities and are sold only at the brewery shop or at selected liquor stores in the Iseshima region. While we can't tour the brewery and observe the brewing process, we can go for the paid samples to taste some of the sake made on the premises. Oh, so fresh! So clean, so fresh and it doesn't even taste like sake to me. It's like really clean tasting. So refreshing. Gujo Hachiman. About three hours north of central Nagoya by train is Gujo Hachiman a small riverside town situated at the confluence of two major rivers in the middle of Gifu Prefecture and surrounded by mountains. The small town has an abundance of clean, clear waters, earning it a spot in one of the 100 best water villages in Japan and consequently makes it a suitable place to brew various kinds of alcohol. The town is also famous for being the birthplace and the largest producer of fruit samples, which are the fake fruit replicas seen in many a store window. Gujo Hachiman Bakshu Kobokobo is a small craft beer brewery located along the town's main street. Behind these doors is the Kobokobo microbrewery, which can be hard to miss if you don't know what you're looking for. Let's go inside. The owner, Matsumoto-san, moved to Gujo Hachiman to establish his microbrewery because of the region's good quality water. The beer is actually made in the basement and anybody can go downstairs to take a look. I'm going to check it out. It takes about a month to make a basic batch of beer, and depending on type, the beer gets left to mature further. Kobo Kobo has a repertoire of around 15 varieties of beer, including seasonal and aged ones. There is a tasting counter at the brewery that is open on the weekends and public holidays, where one can enjoy draft beer or buy bottles of Kobo Kobo beer to enjoy elsewhere. Two beers! This is the best place to take five ren Gujo Hajiman. Imagine you're tired from you know, sightseeing and walking and you take a chance and walk through those doors over there and now you find yourself in this peaceful, quiet garden enjoying some craft beer. Well, that's me and I truly am living my best life here in Gujo Hajiman. Kanpai! Oh, ginger. I spent the rest of my time in Gujo Hachiman taking in the sights of the quaint town, as well as sampling more cute snacks and street food. This cafe is the place to be if you want to try local Gujo Hachiman food and drink. They've got Kobo Kobo beer, which we were at just now, Tatsumi Distillery gin and absinthe. I got the absinthe, as well as Pachi Cola, the local craft cola. And it's all mine. Oh, the absinthe is so good. Never thought I would be drinking Japanese absinthe in Japan, in Gujo Hajiman. Hirano Jozo. 15 minutes by train from central Gujo Hajiman is Hirano Jozo, a sake brewery. The water source where the brewery is located has been celebrated for its good quality for centuries and is used in all parts of the sake-making process at Hirano Jozo. Brewery tours are offered here, and Hiyoki-san, the brewmaster, is going to take me around and explain how sake is made. 
Before we jump into the tour which mirrors the sake making process, here's a brief explanation on how sake is made. Rice is first polished and then steamed. A portion of rice is mixed with koji mold to make koji rice. A starter mash containing koji rice, yeast and water is made and added to the main mash which contains steamed rice, koji rice and water. The ingredients are combined and left to ferment. After the fermentation is completed, the mash is pressed and filtered to separate the liquid from the solids. The liquid is sake, while the solids are sake lees. Our brewery tour starts with seeing the huge rice steamer in the ground, then heading into the koji rice making room, then to the fermentation tank room, and ends with a tasting session. This is the sake we saw in the tank just now, and I'm going to give it a try. Whoa! Wow! Zioi! Wow! This is slightly viscous, and the alcohol percentage is really high, so it kind of hits you, but it's got this sweet aftertaste. Definitely worth trying. A trip to Guzhou can be more than making food samples and strolling in an atmospheric quaint town. Be sure to dive into the smaller businesses to meet the locals, uncover some hidden gems, and taste the same water in its different roles. And that was our trip visiting craft beer and sake breweries in and around Nagoya. Thanks for joining me. I hope this video has been enjoyable and perhaps even inspires some ideas, should you decide to plan a trip to central Japan. For more information about this trip or to watch another video, click the links on the screen now or head over to japanguide.com, your comprehensive, up-to-date travel guide firsthand from Japan. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell for more videos about Japan. Happy travels!